Persepolis, the story of childhood, by Marjane Satrapi. Introduction. In the second millennium BC, while the Elam nation was developing a civilization alongside Babylon, Indo-European invaders gave their name to the immense Iranian plateau where they settled. The word, quote, Iran, was derived from, quote, Ari Irania Vajo, which means, quote, the origin of the Aryans. These people were semi-nomads whose descendants were the Medes and the Persians. The Meds, the Medes, excuse me, founded the first Iranian nation in the 7th century BC. It was later destroyed by Cyrus the Great. He established what became one of the largest empires of the ancient world, the Persian Empire. In the 6th century BC, Iran was prefer referred to as Persia, its Greek name, until 1935 when Reza Shah, the father of the last Shah of Iran, asked everyone to call the country Iran. Iran was rich because of its wealth and its geographic location and invited attacks from Alexander the Great, from its Arab neighbors to the west, from, Turk from Turkish and Mongolian conquerors. Iran was often subject to foreign domination. Yet the Persian language and culture withstood these invasions. The invaders assimilated into this strong culture, and in some ways, they became Iranian, Iranians themselves. Excuse me. In the 20th century, Iran entered a new phase. Reza Shah decided to modernize and westernize the country, but, we, but meanwhile, a fresh source of wealth was discovered, oil. And with the oil came another invasion. The West, particularly Great Britain, wielded a strong influence on the Iranian economy. During the Second World War, the British, Soviets, and Americans asked Reza Shah to ally himself with them against Germany. But Reza Shah, who sympathized with the Germans, declared Iran a neutral zone. So the Allies invaded and occupied Iran. Reza Shah was sent into exile and was succeeded by his son, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, who was known simply as the Shah. In 1951, Mohammad Mosaddegh, the prime minister of Iran, nationalized the oil industry. In retaliation, Great Britain organized an embargo on all exports of oil from Iran. In 1953, the CIA, with the help of British intelligence, organized a coup against him. Mosaddegh was overthrown, and the Shah, who had earlier escaped from the country, returned to power. The Shah stayed on the throne until 1979, when he fled Iran to escape the Islamic Revolution. Since then, this old and great civilization has been discussed mostly in connection with fundamentalism, fin fanaticism, excuse me, fanaticism, and terrorism. As an Iranian who has lived more than half of my life in Iran, I know that this image is far from the truth. This is why writing Persepolis was most excuse me, was so important to me. I believe that an entire nation should not be judged by the wrongdoings of a few extremists. I also don't want those Iranians who lost their lives in prisons defending freedom, who died in the war against Iraq, who suffered under various repressive regimes, or who were forced to leave their families and flee their homeland to be forgotten. One can forgive, but
but no, but one should never forget. Marjan Satrapi, Paris, September 2002. Persepolis, The Veil. This is me when I was 10 years old. This was in 1980. And this is a class photo. I'm sitting on the far left so you don't see me. From left to right, Golnaz, Mashid, Narheen, Mina. In 1979, a revolution took place. It was later called, quote, the Islamic Revolution. Then came 1980, the year it became obligatory to wear the veil at school. Wear this. We didn't really like to wear the veil, especially since we didn't understand why we had to. It's too hot out. Execution in the name of freedom. Ooh, I'm the monster of darkness. Give me my veil back. You'll have to lick my feet. Giddy up. And also because the year before in 1979, we were in a French non-religious school where boys and girls were together. And then suddenly in 1980, all bilingual schools must be closed down. There are symbols. They are symbols of capitalism. Bravo. What wisdom of decadence. This is called a, quote, cultural revolution. We found ourselves veiled and separated from our friends. And that was that. Everywhere in the streets where we were, everywhere in the streets, there were demonstrations for and against the veil. The veil, the veil, the veil, the veil, the veil. Freedom, 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 freedom. And one of the demonstrations, at one of the demonstrations, a German journalist took a photo of my mother. I was really proud of her. Her photo was published in all the European newspapers. And even in one magazine in Iran. My mother was really scared. Have you seen this? Don't worry, darling. She dyed her hair. She wore dark glasses for a long time. I really don't know what to think about the veil. Deep down, I was very religious, but as a family, we were very modern and avant-garde. I was born with religion. At the age of six, I was already sure I was the last prophet. This was a few years before the revolution. Oh, celestial light! Before me, there had been a few others. I am the last prophet. A woman? I wanted to be a prophet because our maid did not eat with us. Because my father had a Cadillac. And above all, because my grandmother's knees always ached. Oh, come here, Marge. Margie. Help me to stand up. Don't worry. Soon you won't have to any more pain. You'll see. Like all my predecessors, I had my holy book. The first three rules came from Zarathustra. He was the first prophet in my country before the Arab invasion. You must base everything on these three rules. Behave well, speak well, act well. I also wanted us to celebrate the traditional Zarathustrian holidays, like the fire ceremony, before the first, before the Persian New Year, Nor, Noruz on March 21st, the first day of spring. Only my grandmother knew about my book. Rule number six, everybody should have a car. Rule number seven, all maids should eat at the table with the others. Rule number nine, rule number eight, no old person should have to suffer. In that case, I'll be your first disciple. Really? But tell me, how will, 
But tell me how you'll arrange for old people not to suffer. It will simply be forbidden. Every night, I had a big discussion with God. God, give me some more time. I'm not quite ready yet. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, celestial light. You are my choice. My last and my best choice. Except for my grandmother, I was obviously the only one who believed in myself. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'll be a prophet. <laughs> She's crazy. My parents were called in by the teacher. Your child is disturbed. She wants to become a prophet. What about it? Doesn't this worry you? No, not at all. Nonetheless, my parents were puzzled. So tell me, my child, what do you want to be when you grow up? A prophet? I want to be a doctor. That's fine, my love, that's fine. I felt guilty towards God. You want to be a doctor? I thought that, no, no, I will be a prophet, but they mustn't know. I wanted to be justice, love, and the wrath of God all in one.